Hi, this is Dr. Uchi Odiatu. You're watching live on the Best Practices Show. Thanks for watching the Best Practice Show. We take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And today is always a fun show for me when I have this guy on. He's been a regular guest, brings a lot of energy, way more energy than I do, Dr. Uchi Odiatu. And we're going to be talking about one of the big things that compromises your treatment outcomes as a dentist. You do not want to miss this because this guy is amazing. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You're going to love this. Now, a couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you're watching, and if you've got a comment for Ooch, just put it in there and I'll dish it to the man while we got him on here. Or if you're watching it later on, I'm Ooch, you could be one of the top social media experts ever. I don't know how you do what you do, but you're all over the place. You'll see this guy will get back to you. He responds. He shares photos. It's awesome how fast this guy gets back. So we want you to get the most out of this when you're watching these shows. And again, I'm just crazy grateful. Thank you for sending us all the suggestions on shows, things you want to see. We are lining them all up and uh, going to do our best to make make all this happen. Uh, right now, we're up over 39,000 followers on Facebook and over 150,000 of you have visited us on iTunes. And thank you. That's all I can say. Now, my guest today He's the man. He's the myth. He's the legend. He is one of the most popular speakers in all of dentistry. And Uch, I say this every time you're on, but like, you're my friend. We speak all the time. And like, whenever you're speaking, I want to leave my lecture and go to yours. And this is the one of the, they should put velvet ropes outside your lecture. Cause like, there's a line going down the hallway, people lining up cause they want to be in the front couple rows. And I'm just telling you, if you haven't seen Ooch speak, you got to see him speak. Every time I'm with you, I get something new. I was telling you, I got a big bowl of apples downstairs and I got everybody in my family eating apples to get the gut flora thing in the right place. Um, you're changing my life. So I'm guessing you're changing other people's lives. Now, I know who you are. Some of our uh, regular viewers know who you are, but somebody's watching this and they don't know who Uchi Odiatu is. Give them a little background. Who are you? Okay. I'm, I'm a dentist foremost. I've been a dentist now for almost 30 years, believe it or not. That's crazy. Uh, but I've been exercising for 41 years, which is kind of crazy also. I'm certified as a trainer. I'm certified as a yoga instructor. I just got a boot camp instructor certification. And um, I, I love the chairside conversations. I'm passionate about getting my patients healthy. I think patients are starving for healthcare providers that look at all of them from head to toe. I know dentists and hygienists, we're great at the mouth, but there's a bit of a disconnect sometimes when you look at the greater body. And I think some of the vocabulary and some of the terminology that I take for granted, I like to share. So in all my lectures, I share with my colleagues how important it is to learn the terminology that can help your patients look good and feel better all over and how mm -hmm. the mouth is the true gateway to mm -hmm. overall vitality. Right. Absolutely. And not only are you a regular practicing dentist among all those other things, but you're a speaker, you, you know, you're a real guy. You're not one of those guys that's just living out of a book somewhere. You've got kids everywhere. Your wife is like a fitness expert too. You guys are just, it's awesome. And, and you're how old? Rem remind us. <laughs> no, because I'm, I'm over half a century for crying out loud. So I know, but if I'm you've ever old, yeah. like 20 plus chin ups, which is kind of crazy. I just posted a video the other day and, uh, and, I, and I posted a picture that was done six years ago. And mostly society believes as you get older, you look more worn out and more beaten up. But um, you feed yourself right, you hydrate right, you sleep right, you take the best supplements, you take a probiotic, you love your job, and you have a, a, an idea of a, a servant um, attitude in terms of serving people. You will keep that effervescent Jack LaLanne style attitude um, indefinitely. So there is no... There is no end zone when it comes time to life if you're living in the zone. Yeah. And I was going to share a, a, a little quote. My wife gave me a quote yesterday that she saw and she's like, Yo, you, you'll love this. It said, if you don't take care of your physical body every day, you have a 0% chance of ever becoming your best self. And I'm like, that is so spot on. Like you'll never get there if you don't take care of your physical body. So it's kind of like... Um, 
it's a non-negotiable. Wouldn't you agree? Especially in this profession. Well, you know, I would say, you know, the human body is our gift from God and how we treat it is our gift back to God. Mm. So um, I, don't th I think a lot of people don't treat their bodies with reverence. I think many people just treat it as an afterthought. You know, if I feel like this. I'm going to suck back that. I'm going to open this. And then they, the next day or the next week or the next month, they curse how they look and feel. And I'm saying that once you start treating your body more reverently, like really having a deep reverence for what your body is, what it's about, and how it can serve you and, and living out your purpose, I think then you'll start feeding it properly. Until it happens, it'll always be just taking me from point A to point B, which leads you into that whole um, section of life where you don't like the way you look and feel. You get out of the shower, and instead of just standing there in front of the mirror, you quickly put the clothes on because you can't stand yourself. Yeah. And I'm saying aesthetically. I'm talking about functionality. Like You, you got to look and feel the part if you want to be an outstanding healthcare provider. Absolutely. I saw this quote too. I don't know where I saw this, but there's no better outfit than a better body. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're, cause people want to buy an outfit to feel better. The best outfit you can buy is a better body. Now we're going to get into this a little bit, but you and I love examining these topics. And as a restorative dentist, if you're growing a practice, one of the things that you want to do is have predictability and treatment planning, but there's one big thing that gets in the way and sabotages treatment outcomes. What is it? Ooch. Well, patient lifestyle habits. I say that patients do not leave their marriages in the car when they come into your office. They don't leave their, how much they love their job in the car. They don't leave their sleeping habits in the car. They don't leave their physical activity levels in the car. They don't leave their dietary habits in the car. They don't leave how they manage stress in the car. Mm -hmm. And they sit down in the chair and we look at the mouth and we take a good history. However, unless you ask deeper questions, you never actually realize how powerful a shift worker is. Like you do an extraction on someone who's been up all night it's a different style of healing that'll happen if someone slept eight hours and spent 25% of the night in deep sleep and dreamt 100 minutes a night. So right. um, we need to start thinking outside the box when it comes to the mouth in terms of asking bigger questions. Right. Now, let me be the devil's advocate here, too, because I love this question. And I get this all the time. Uch, you know, somebody, a dentist might be watching this go, I totally agree. But, Ooch, like, I'm trying to do dentistry. Can you really influence these things that we're talking about? And I want you to, because you've been doing this a long time. Give us your thoughts on that. Well, give me an example. I had a lady come in as an emergency at the end of the day. Tuesday, I worked 12 hours, like, you know, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And this lady came in as an emergency. She had some left uh, jaw pain. Uh, she was pointing to a tooth. We did some x-rays. We did hot and cold tests, percussion tests. Took a pan. She thought it was her sinus. She has a doctor um, with, a, with a referral to an ENT. She has a neurologist concern. And then I said, I, I couldn't find any dental issue that could be causing her pain. And I was like her, her, one of her last resorts. She was in at that time to find out what, what, what could a dentist help her. Right. And I said, um, the simple question, what's going on in your life lately? And, and she goes, why do you ask? I said, what's going on in your life? She goes, well, my brother passed away two months ago. I said, um, did you, where was it? She goes, he, he said, back in Iran. And I said, did you go to the funeral? She goes, I, I couldn't go. I said, so your brother passed away eight weeks ago and you couldn't go to the funeral. Uh, like I'm thinking, I said, just by the wear patterns in your mouth and the fact that there was no pathology in terms of decay or an abscess is that you're grinding your teeth and uh, you're, bruxing, you're bruxing. And I'm thinking stress related with respect to your, your, your brother's uh, passing. I said, how does that sound? And she said, um, a tear, her eyes welled up and a tear came to her eye. And she said, um, makes sense. She goes, never thought of that. She never thought that somehow uh, her not being able to go to her brother's funeral was going to impact her health and manifest as a, possibly a dental concern. Anyway, we talked a bit further. Um, I said, still get the, the referrals to the ENT. Still see the neurologist that your medical doctor wants you to go see. I'll see you back in a month. But in the meantime, I said, I want you to take, get, get a walk outside. I want you to spend some time in the sun. I want you to write home. I want you to uh, maybe see if you can plan a trip back home. I said, however, if this, this jaw gets any more tender or the, if this mouth area gets any more tender, you know, call back the office. But I don't see you back in 30 days. Wow. So, so instead of working up for a bite guard, I'm thinking, let's look at the, these intangibles. Like she wasn't able to go to her brother's funeral. He was 60, passed away. She's 55. But um, emotions and how you deal with stress shows up in the body. Um, some massage therapist friends of mine said, um, if they ever massage a person over a, a shoulder or a lower back or a hip, um, they, they can actually have a client that get emotional. And clients always wonder why they're getting emotional, but people wear their lives in the musculature of their body. 
uh, muscles are one of the biggest organs in the body, and it's one way the body holds on to stories or emotions that will manifest later on. And this is, could be a little bit uh, alternative medicine or complementary, but it makes sense. There's a book called The Mind-Body Prescription by John Sarno, MD. And in this book, he said that people hold emotions in different parts of their bodies, and it manifests as a headache or a migraine or a sinus issue, or knee or back pain. And this is a medical doctor. He just passed away recently in his 90s, but uh, it's called The Mind-Body Prescription. So uh, I love reading these books because it, it gives me the vocabulary to talk to patients outside, and they get this value-added uchi, and yeah. I really tap into a patient's um, idea that they're in a different kind of office. And yeah. way out the door, she said, I want to book myself a new patient exam. She goes, and my husband's going to go see you. And I think my son's also going to see you. So just by having this 10, 15 minute interaction, by asking bigger questions about lifestyle, all of a sudden I have three new patients in the office. And it's that easy. They didn't take a, they didn't see my Syrac or my digital pen, but they got the fact that I cared big enough to ask the bigger questions. Right. I am so like, we'll, we got to pause right there because there are people that fix teeth and there are people that change lives. And everybody obviously has to choose which direction you want to go, but they're separate businesses. And guys, if you're watching this, you get a sense of how Uch's practice works. Like it's not about wowing them with technology. It's not about getting, like you, what you did was you paused and you asked a question. How powerful is a question? Yeah, tremendous. It shows that you care. It shows that you're listening. It shows that you're going to wait for a response. And patients aren't used to that. The patients are used to being coming in and going out. But when you linger with a question and you you lean into it and you wait for the response, man, it, it's it's impactful and it's uh, and it, it moves dentistry beyond transactional and it moves me into it into transformational and yeah. that's fulfilling. Like that 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 one little 10, 15 minute appointment really made my day. It was yeah. a long day, but it made my day. Yeah, and that's awesome. Now, give us the thinking behind this because you want to, you kind of want to eradicate all the things that would get in the way before you'd even start treatment. But it's bigger than that. You're trying to treat the whole person, and before you'd get into any challenges, like find out what's really going on with this person. Well, especially when I was going through the clinical tests and going through hot and cold tests, and percussion tests, and looking at X-rays and not seeing anything, it dawned on me there's something else going on here. And, and talk about it in my spider sense and intuitive sense. Yeah. But um, just by the way, she was sitting and talking to me. I just said, what else is going on? It's such an easy question. What else is going on? You know, some people are having mortgage issues, marriage issues, uh, uh, challenge with their son or daughter. And this plays up in how they're eating. If, if someone's stressed out, if someone's not managing stress well and they've been up all night, um, they have higher levels of CB active protein in their body. Uh, they have higher inflammatory messengers, messengers surging through their body. They have faster pulses. Their platelets are sticky. Their blood pressure's up. Uh, they're not spending time healing. And then they present in our office. And meanwhile, they've been up all night worrying about something. So this is part and parcel of the conversations we need to have um, chair side. So patients see that you're looking at a bigger scope. And you want to understand it all at this point in time. What I'm saying is just asking bigger questions definitely helps. <laughs> that is so awesome, buddy. I'm just glad my house is not alone. My house looks exactly like that. So, except my kids are just bigger. Now, let's, let's go into the components, like some of the different areas that you see this um, when it comes to patients' behaviors, um, obviously, because stress isn't going away. It's not like you know, you're seeing patients getting healthier and less stressed. I mean, you get to see it in all these different components. I would imagine sleep is a big one. And what else? Well, look, I look at people's um, activity level. Um, I know if I have a, if I have a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. Friday, the um, hey, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. So how old are they? Wait, give me the ages. Kylie's 12. Uh, Theo's, Theo's three. <laughs> Theo's three. And, and, and Jolie's six. The, the, the only one missing is the 10 year old. So awesome. and it's live action. This is it not staged here. So it's totally cool. It's totally cool. Hey, hey guys. Okay, thanks, I love it. Love okay. it. <laughs> So let's go into the one to physical activity. I'm, I'm a big believer in that um, uh, people who are physically active have stronger immune systems. Uh, people who, have, who are physically active, that, that one of the ways they've shown that being, ex being an exerciser makes your immune system stronger. And every dentist and hygienist out there knows that if I have a patient with a strong immune system, they're going to heal better. They're going to integrate around the uh, integrate around the implant better. They'll have better post-op, less chance of dry, dry socket. So you, you, I want a patient with a stronger immune system. Well, they've, they've shown in the American College of Sports Medicine journals that um, if someone is an exerciser, their, their immune system is regularly defragged, which means that the, the, the body 
uh, removes permanently differentiated T cells. So the immune system is better able to harness an attack on an invader. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is kind of cool. So if I have right. an active athlete, if I have a healthy person in the chair, their immune system is going to be stronger. Um, for, that's, that's one of the main reasons. I love, I love working on healthy people, but we don't always have that gift. There are people who don't exercise. Next, 90% of North Americans, or in the world for that matter, do not have a regular physical activity habit. Wow. And so when you look at the, you know, the implications of this, I mean, it, it starts to spread everywhere. It doesn't just isolate itself in one area. I mean, I think it also relates to mental health eventually. But um, I, again, I keep going back to the whole thing. Ooh, I, like, uh, is it the serenity prayer? Like if I ask questions, you know, and I'm trying to help patients, do I just try to do as much as I can and then pray about the things that I can't control? Like, tell me your thoughts in a restorative process. Well, I guess getting a new good new patient exam is amazing, and to not you know to, to go beyond you know do you drink sweets or do you have a sweet tooth? Mm -hmm. uh, to really ask people, do you enjoy your job? You know, I remember a medical doctor, author of fifty books, he's a psychoneuroimmunologist, and he said a big factor for men having a heart attack is whether you enjoy your job or not. And mm -hmm. um, so, simply, if you enjoy your job, you're more likely to live a little longer. Okay, mm -hmm. so simply by me asking people in the new patient exam, how, how much do you enjoy being an accountant? Why do you ask? And they'll say, um, I love it. Or I can't stand it, doc. If I could get out of it and go into my own business, I'd love that. And I'm thinking that shows up in your mouth. And you go, how can you tell? And I'll show them wear patterns. I'll show where they're bruxing. I'll show where the cusps are being flattened. I'll show them where enamel is being worn through and then the dentin is being hollowed out. And I'll show them that uh, part of um, low-grade chronic sympathetic nervous system activation leads to GERD. 60% of adults have gastroesophageal reflux disease. So this acid is coming up into the mouth. It pools on the back. And they have certain depressions on the occlusal, occlusal of those lower teeth. And they're saying, how can you tell I don't like my job from my mouth? I said, there's just signs. But does this, do you find that interesting? And they think this is a different conversation than I've ever had. Right. And they say, about you and I'm, I'm in the right spot so mm -hmm. those are the kind of discussions we have you know do you like your job is a discussion that, that dentists should be asking patients yeah that is a great question completely i mean they've never had a dental experience like that when somebody asked them that that particular type of question so it's pretty wild now um we talked about sleep you said sedentary lifestyle what are some of the other factors when you put this all together like what would you say the top three or four are that affect treatment outcomes in the restorative process? If you were to say lifestyle, behavioral habits of patients? Well, well, diet for sure. I think they've actually shown that diet is a number one uh, inflammatory uh, agent in the body. If, if someone mm -hmm. has poor eating habits, like eats a lot of processed carbs, refined carbohydrates, too much sugar, uh, too much of the wrong kinds of fats, they'll have system-wide inflammation. And many times you know, we go back and, and a lot of dentists and hygienists will ask, is it just about diabetes? No, it's not just about diabetes. We're talking about anyone who has refined carbs, anyone that eats uh, poor fats, trans fats, will have higher levels of um, insulin, have higher levels of um, high and low blood sugar. Uh, they'll have more free radicals, oxidative stress. And oxidative stress leads to inflammation. So they'll have elevated inflammation. And they'll have four times more inflammation in, a, in a, a, their, their bodies that a person who eats a healthy diet does. And you're thinking, well, you can't just order that. You know, they, I've read that 95% of all North Americans do not eat five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day. So not, only 5% of us eat five to nine servings. So everyone else basically, or you know, 19 out of 20 patients in a day are gonna be, have, have some background inflammation. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. But what it does is though, you won't get as good of a healing response in those people than someone who eats five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables. And that's why that comes up in, into my discussion. When patients ask, you know, why do I need to restore a quadrant? Or why is it important that I take it to look after the dry mouth? And I said, well, if, if your teeth aren't solid, if you're missing a segment, if you have loose teeth, if you have a dry mouth, you're, you're gonna chew food differently than I will. So if my teeth are solid with lots of saliva and I have no TMJ pain, and you have T TMJ pain, you have a dry mouth, or you have loose or missing teeth, we'll eat the same amount of food at the same time, but you'll chew the same amount a number of times but your stomach will get less nutrient absorption out of it. And as you get less nutrient absorption, your body will less be able to repair. So having less teeth, having dry mouth, having TMD pain, TMD issues, means that your good body will, will have more breakdown or accelerated breakdown than I will. So it's mm -hmm. important to, to restore that arch. 
patients get that. And that is the mouth body connection right there. Going right. beyond the diabetes and the pregnancy gingivitis. We're talking if you have poor or if you have poor dentition, you know, loose teeth, missing teeth, dry mouth, you'll eat the same food as I do, but you will get less nutrient absorption out because your gut flora will not be able to absorb the nutrients as well because the foods go down in bigger pieces or pieces that aren't as uh, emulsified as well in uh, uh, oral saliva. Yeah. Can, now, can I ask you just as I listen to this, it's fantastic what you do, but like how much impact do you see a, a dramatic amount of behavioral change with these patients when they come back? And then do you just, do you manage expectations if they don't? Let's say you're going to restore the whole arch and say, Mrs. Jones, now one thing I have to let you know about before we start this is this. Like, give me a, give me some perspective on that. Sure. Well, it takes more than one appointment to restore, restore an arch, right? So you're right. with you either two, three, four, five, six times. Um, and you, you know, I, I make this sound really easy, but if you remember, if someone has an 18 year old son, uh, after 18 years of being with you, the chances of them making their bed every morning are pretty small. So you right. had 18 years with them. So you and I, uh, as a dentist, I'd have maybe two, four, six, seven, ten 10 hours. So it's kind of arrogant of me to think I can make, you know, lifelong change in 10 hours. However, um, enthusiasm is a pretty convincer. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact that you care enough to talk about something outside of your perceived level of but um, looking the part, if you're, if, you're, if, you're a dental, if you're a healthcare provider and you look healthy, that is very convincing. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you are lean, if your eyes are bright, if your breath is fresh, you know, if you don't have broccoli between your teeth, um, it's amazing how persuasive that is. Yeah. So the idea being, um, I don't care if they make a change immediately. I, many, I don't have people jumping out of the chair and saying, I'm going to Whole Foods, I'm going to spend $500 on my grocery bill. What I might do, though, I'll say, hey, there's um, a book I like on my phone. It's called The Diet Myth. I'm, okay. I'm listening to the audio right now. Here, take a picture of the, the cover, and I want you to download it tonight on iTunes or iBooks. And I want you to start listening to that to and from your appointments with me. And basically go, wow, I never thought of listening to books on audio. I said, you know, I have 20 books. I'll give you all my best books as you come in for different appointments. Mm -hmm. And that engages them. That intrigues them. You know, I'm giving them tools. I'm telling them stuff, but I'm also giving them tools and how they can learn the vocabulary. And you need, you need to learn the vocabulary to master this material. Right. And that's fantastic. And especially, you know, when it comes to educational material, the diet myth, like give us some perspective. What is the patient learning in the diet myth that would be important for us to know as healthcare providers? Well, it's written by an epidemiologist named as Tim Spector out of the UK. It's a 2015. Um, he's blown the doors of all kinds of myths. He talks about how that uh, a lot of patients that still think that coffee is bad for them. He said, basically, there's um, hundreds of studies showing that coffee actually lowers heart attack risks and increases life expectancy. Uh, but many people will say, oh, doc, I have three cups of coffee. And, and he gives you the science behind why coffee is good for you. One of the reasons is every cup of coffee has a half a gram of fiber, which your gut flora loves. Uh, coffee is um, uh, a good food because basically it feeds your gut flora. Also, it actually increases digestion. It's a laxative. Um, and unless you're putting coffee, as you're putting milk and sugar in it, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great beverage. So I tell people, as long as you don't abuse it, coffee is actually good for you. And that's in the book. Uh, another one that Miss e. talks about is the fact that you don't actually have to lose weight to be healthy. There's lots of studies that show that active people who never actually can lose weight for whatever reason can have the same life expectancy as a lean person that doesn't exercise. So um, these are all neat things. that Most people have never heard them before. And what he does, he gives you the science behind it, which is great because uh, this is not, you know, National Enquirer or, you know, People Magazine with, with you know, with just the uh, generalizations. He gives you the science. So I love the book. It's great for patients. It's also great, great for um, healthcare providers too. Yeah, Uch, this is fantastic. Give us, give us some final. You know, I know we only have to get get you for a couple more minutes, and I have to roll too. But what would you give us some final pieces of advice on this? If I'm a young dentist watching this, and I say, Uch, this is great, but uh, my practice is crazy. Like, where do I start? Uh, give me I an start idea. Reading. Yeah, start reading. You know, I, I might seem like I know a lot, but I have a beginner's mind. I'm always learning. I uh, just read a book called um, so just the Eastern Body, Western Mind. It's all about the chakra system. And I thought I knew the chakras until I read this book on chakras, over 300 pages by An Anodia Judith. And it's all about chakra energy system. So as a healthcare provider, if you want to stay on the cutting edge, like, so go to, the, go to the conferences and take the clinical stuff. You know, learn how to place implants, learn about CIRAC, learn about uh, you know, nutrition. However, I say supplement that on your own. And I think audiobooks are great. So The Diet Myth is another good, uh, really good audio, uh, audiobook. There's a book called The Microbiome Solution, which is amazing to learn about gut flora. And I'd say every month, you know, change your audiobook, listen to it in the car. And in, in a year, that's 12 books. 12 yeah. books puts you on the fast track 
to really expand your horizon and learn more about the intangibles, which will set you apart from every other healthcare provider out there. And you won't, you won't be competing with anyone in your building. Yeah, I love, and you're not only, you're not feeding your mouth, you're feeding your brain when you put those audiobooks. I mean, that's like my new favorite thing uh, of all time. So I couldn't agree more. I'm going to check out the diet myth too. So Ooch, I know people that are watching this, if you haven't seen the Ooch man speak, you got to make him, you got to go see him speak. Now, get, keep in mind, Ooch, people are listening to this on iTunes. If I want to find out more about you, how can I find you? Where do I go? Like, how do I get more of this? Okay. Well, you can go to my website, you know, drucci.com. So D-R-U-C-H-E.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm, I'm posting usually a couple of times a day. So my, my, my to get a hold of me, it's um, at Fit Speakers. So at Fit Speakers. Um, I'm on Facebook quite a bit, as you can, you know, about three, four times a day I'm posting. My wife posts. And I'm reading articles, condensing them, digesting them, and then putting it out there and letting people know uh, how it can help them. Um, so those probably are probably my best ways. Instagram, website, and uh, Facebook. Oh, they want to buy my book. But right now, um, HarperCollins owns the digital rights. And John Wiley basically is no longer printing it. So my book has been sold upwards of $900 a copy because it's no longer in print. So people wow. think it's pictures items. So don't ask me why. You know, pay under 100. You know, don't go over 100. But so how do we get a copy of it? Download it on Kindle. How do you get a copy? Go on Amazon. And sometimes okay. it sells for $30. But some people have took a screenshot and said, Ooch, why is your book $350? And I tell them, I get 25 cents. I don't show who's getting <laughs> $349. But Kindle's the best way. $13 US will get you a downloadable copy of The Miracle of Health. I've had people read that book alone, lose 20 pounds. I've had people read that book alone and, and set themselves up on a new journey to having a body of their dreams and also being able to understand uh, and better understand their healthy patients and to know what their healthy patients are doing and what supplements they're taking and really create a blueprint for their lives. So it's um, I, I'm just excited people enjoy my passion. And I love igniting other people's passion and set, them, that's, set their hearts on fire for health yeah. and wellness. Well, Uch, we love it. And it relates to my passion on fire. I don't know that I could do as many pull-ups as you, but I'm working on it. I'm going to get there someday. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, in Hawaii. The AD, are you going to ADA in Hawaii? Are you in Hawaii? I will not. I will not. I'm going to miss you this year. But uh, I'll go next year. Should yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. yeah we'll set up a chin up. We'll, right outside our rooms, we'll shut up some kind of scaffold. We'll have like some kind of dental warrior ninja thing set up. So you and I could go toe to toe or something, head to head. I'm, I'm going to need somebody to kind of like lifting my legs up behind me so I can hang with you, man. So hey, your buddy, wife's in shape. I'm sure she could do that. She could help you she out. She could totally do it. She could totally do it. So buddy, I'm so grateful. Stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. Um, we're going to have Ooch back for so many other things. And um, uh, all I can say is thank you. Ooch, this is just awesome. Awesome. Now, if you guys watching the show, th first of all, thank you for watching the show. If you enjoyed the day, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share with your friends, keep sending us suggestions for things that you want to see with Ooch or any other guest, And, uh, I'll get him back and we'll ask him the tough questions and get it straight from the master himself. So you guys have a great weekend. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practice show. Take care guys. Mm -hmm.